Uh, well, no, I was a little bit... I was certainly disappointed um, with the way that they had disposed of the animals. Not that, obviously, once an animal is dead, there's a welfare problem in that, but it certainly demonstrates reasonably poor practice that there are um, dead dogs being dumped in, in the back, back of a property like that, yeah. OK. Who is responsible for getting into the Valley Animal Research Centre, VARC, and keeping an eye on what they're doing and how they do it? Well, perhaps it would help if I explained um, the New Zealand system for regulating the use of animals in research. Uh, in, any um, institution or person who wants to use animals for research or testing or teaching has to have a code of ethical conduct approved by the Director General of um, Agriculture. And, under, and, and what that code of ethical conduct does is it sets the standards that are to be used within that institution um, for the ethical oversight of both the projects and the way the animals are kept. And under that system, um, the institution has to create an animal ethics committee that will oversee the projects and monitor what goes on afterwards. So, in fact, it's and not your committee, it's their it's committee, not, a committee they have created, each institution yes. has created. So, in the case of VARC, the Valley Animal Research Centre, who was on their committee? Oh, I can't answer that. I don't know the names of all the people that were on the animal ethics committees, but I can tell you what sort of people they were. Oh, hold because on. Do you know the names of anyone on the committee at VARC? Well, I know that Alan Goldenthal was on it. And um, he's, the, he's the owner, right? So he's the he's owner. He's the owner. So, so, in, and so in terms of people that you might see as independent whistleblowers, uh, do you know of anyone? Because we are trying desperately hard to find out who these people are and we can't find a single name. I don't know what the names of the people are, but I know that there would be somebody from the SPCA, there would be an, um, somebody nominated by the New Zealand Veterinary Association and there would be somebody nominated from the regional um, council or local ter territorial authority because that's required by law. There's required to be a, at least three people who are external to the institution and that is what um, um, gives the system its integrity. We have an essentially devolved system in New Zealand where we have NIAC as the oversight but um, the, the decisions are made on a local institutional level by the Animal Ethics Committee. NIAC is your committee, the National Animal Ethics Advisory Committee. You That's met right. four times in 2010. Is it yes. too devolved now? In other words, is there too much in the hands of the people who have vested interests in not holding themselves to account? Um, I don't agree that they would have vested interests in, hold, in, in not holding themselves to account. Can you tell us when the last review of uh, VARC was? 2010. OK. And they came out of that review with uh, enough boxes ticked to pass whatever standards had been set? Yes, they did. Um, and they were re reviewed by one of our most experienced reviewers. Were they still operating then? Um, I'm not sure whether it, there was actually any work going on. There were certainly still animals there. Yes. OK. Can we talk about the kind of work? And I quote from VARC's own final report to their clients, uh, a therapeutics company, uh, testing an anti-arthritic on these beagles, skeletally mature beagle dogs which had their anterior cruciate ligament of one stifle, that's their knee, joint, ruptured. 33 dogs in the trial. Some of them were euthanised as they went along. Eventually all of them were euthanised. Some of them would have suffered some pain for up to 336 days because they would have been receiving the placebo drug. Is that the kind of test you regard as fair and satisfactory? Well, um, this test would have been passed by their Animal Ethics Committee and what the, what the committee is required to do is to carry out a cost-benefit analysis. Now, the reason that we have a special part of the Animal Welfare Act devoted to the use of animals in research, testing and teaching is that um, in some cases animals um, have to suffer some pain as long as there's a benefit to an overall number of animals. But the cruciate ligament is a, a ligament that is very commonly ru ruptured in dogs. It's also very commonly ruptured in rugby football players, I think. 
um, and is something that is often often required to be repaired. Um, and, and so there's always... A absolutely. Looking... But some of these dogs didn't have it repaired, did they? So some of these no, dogs had the cruciate ligament yep. ruptured and they just lived with it for the duration of the trial, lasting 336 days, at which stage they were put down. Yep. A and I guess the question is, is that in the greater good to such an extent that you, as chair of the National Animal Ethics Advisory Committee, are happy that that sort of testing is taking place? <coughs> Uh, as the chair of the National Animal Ethics Advisory Committee, I would assume that the Animal Ethics Committee would have put safeguards in place so that those animals that were not receiving any drugs um, would be monitored very carefully and if at any stage they were shown to be um, in pain or in pain that, was, that, 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 that couldn't be remedied in any other way than giving them a drug, um, then there would be a requirement that they be euthanized early. The, 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 the reason that they have to keep them going is so that they can compare the joint of a dog that's been treated and one that hasn't been treated. And um, yeah, it, it, it doesn't sound nice, but if you, if you want to have drugs that will help dogs, that will help people uh, uh, um, in terms of pain relief, in terms of all sorts of medications, then sometimes um, there is some suffering involved. Just one thing before we go. Are you going to investigate the dumping of these animals? Uh, our reporter and our cameraman found bodies and parts of bodies distributed far and wide across this piece of land. Um, I think that's probably an issue for the, local, for the local council, really, John. I mean, once the animal is dead, its welfare, although it's absolutely disgusting and I'm not happy with it at all, um, I, um, I think that that's probably something that the local council will probably be very keen to look into.